implementation to build a distributed token cache. As a first step, what we are going to do is we are going to add a new Azure Cache Worker Role project within our cloud service. So when we publish our application onto the cloud, it is also going to deploy an instance for this Cache Worker Role project. As mentioned earlier, for this demo, we are using the Windows Azure 1.7 SDK. That's your June 2012 SDK. So what you can do is you can go to your relying party and add a new get package called Microsoft.Windows Azure Caching, which would add all the required assemblies for the Windows Azure Caching preview. And it would allow you to communicate with your uh, cache worker role. Then we create a class called uh, Distributed Token Cache. This class is in turn going to communicate with your cache worker role, add the tokens there, retrieve the tokens from it, and so on and so forth. Next step, we wire up uh, the distributed token cache with the session uh, security token handler. By default, uh, the token handler uses the in-memory cache and now it is going to use the distributed token cache. So which would ensure that uh, we are able to retrieve the tokens irrespective of the instance where we are running from. And to indicate uh, to Dubaiev to send uh, the SAML ID instead of SAML tokens, you can just set is session mode to true uh, in your uh, global.asx. And we would see a short while uh, demo uh, just doing that. A final note, uh, in case you are working with, uh, with uh, Windows Identity Foundation 4.5, Instead of uh, is session mode, you would be using the property called is reference mode and you have to set that to true. So this would ensure that the DBIF sends the SAML IDs instead of exchanging uh, SAML tokens via the FedAuth cookie. So as we understand now that the SAML tokens are pretty verbose and when we try to exchange SAML tokens using the FedAuth cookie, the size of the FedAuth cookie balloons up. As you can see over here that just for two claims, my username and my email address, the size of the FedAuth cookie uh, is uh, close to 2,800 bytes, right? And this can really grow if I'm passing on more claims, for instance, from my uh, corporate uh, ADFS. So the way we can address uh, this challenge is, uh, is by uh, sending a SAML uh, token ID instead of the SAML token. So we would be storing the SAML tokens on the server and just exchanging the token ID uh, via FedAuth cookie. So when the FedAuth cookie is sent back to us, we would just pick up the corresponding SAML token uh, from our uh, distributed token cache. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, use uh, the Windows Azure uh, caching preview. I'm going to create another caching role and I'm going to leverage that to create a distributed token cache. So I'll select the roles over here, right click and say add, and I would add a new worker role project. And in here, uh, I would select the cache worker role and uh, let's call it as uh, uh, distributed uh, cache role, right? And just say add. So you would see that this is going to create a new Visual Studio project for us uh, called a distributed uh, uh, cache role. So that's been created. And we also get a distributed cache role uh, over here under our uh, cloud service. So when we publish our app uh, next, we would also see that uh, the cache role also would get deployed along with our uh, social web, right? So what we have to do now is uh, we got to sort of access this uh, distributed cache role from our relying party. So from our uh, social web, whenever I'm going to get a SAML uh, ID, I'm going to pass that ID uh, to this uh, cache role and retrieve my SAML token. So to do that, what we have to do is we have to modify or we have to add a NuGet package uh, to our relying party. So I would select our social web, right click that and say manage uh, new get packages. And uh, the way you can uh, pick up the uh, caching preview uh, 
and you get packages is by using this ID called Microsoft.WindowsAzure.Caching. So I would copy that, go back to Visual Studio. And in here I can just uh, search for uh, the package and here I get the uh, Windows Azure uh, Caching Preview package. So I would install that in my relying party. Just say install. And uh, there are a set of assemblies which would be added to my relying party and that would in fact help me to uh, connect uh, with the uh, caching role, the distributed cache role we have created. So we are done. And uh, what this does is that uh, this modifies your uh, relying parties web.config. It also gives you a set of assemblies over here. So you can see that your caching.azure client helper, your caching azure common and uh, other assemblies are added. Uh, only minor change what you got to make is you just got to edit uh, your uh, config file. And in here you have got identifier, which is your uh, cache cluster role name. So you can change that uh, name to your uh, role name. So I've got my cache role name as distributed cache role. So I can just uh, change that, just copy it here and paste it. Yep, so you're all set uh, with the changes required for your relying party to communicate with your distributed cache role. Next, what we would do is that we would add a class in our relying party. So I would add a new class and uh, I would call this class as uh, distributed uh, token cache. Right, and in this class, I'm going to define the various methods to interact with the uh, distributed cache role and retrieve the tokens, store the tokens among others. So I would just go to my notepad and I've kept this uh, class handy, right? So I would just uh, copy this class and I would uh, replace it over here, right? Pretty simple. So got to add few references. Uh, so I have to add this, uh, then I have to also add the uh, security token and then I would also need the reference to the system.identity model. So I would uh, right click the relying party, add reference, uh, go to the recently used assemblies. And in here I've got my system.identity model. So I would just add reference to it. Now ensure that your system.identity model also has got the uh, copy local set to true, right? And uh, is there anything else we need? Uh, doesn't look so. Let's just compile it once to make sure. And there is one more assembly what you got to add reference to. It is your system.runtime.serialization. So let's add reference to that as well. So here is your system.runtime.serialization. Just say okay. Right? And uh, we are all set. So let's take a moment to understand this code. A small reminder that none of the samples within this course are production ready. I would strongly recommend that you scrutinize all the samples and ensure that uh, they meet your uh, security requirements. In over here as well, uh, what I have done is that I've created a class called as distributed token cache, which is inheriting uh, from a class uh, called security token cache. And uh, there are a lot of methods what you would typically implement uh, to create a cache like remove the entries, uh, replace the entries and clear the entries and so on and so forth. But just to keep things simple, I've just implemented uh, two methods. One method is uh, adding a token to your token cache and getting a token from your token cache. And uh, this code is pretty simple as well. So what uh, I get over here is I get a key which is uh, my cache key and this is the value which I would like to add to the cache. So to add this value to the cache I use a serializer. I convert this uh, token to uh, a byte array and then using the uh, caching APIs so we got uh, those uh, assemblies uh, in turn when we added the NuGet package. So 
I've got a class over there as data cache factory and data cache among others. And using those, I can retrieve my cache and I can add um, that token to the cache. So you can see that I'm just uh, using the context ID of my cache key and I'm just adding this uh, serialized uh, byte array token. And the retrieval logic is also similar, wherein I've got my uh, cache key as the only input and I've got an out parameter where I'm supposed to send back the uh, token value, right? And I just again uh, get the default cache and try to get uh, the uh, token using the cache keys uh, context ID. And again, I deserialize it and uh, I deserialize it into the security token value back and uh, return the token over here. So pretty simple code. Uh, what we have to do now is a small change. And that is to go to our uh, global.asx and just change this uh, MRU, which is in memory security token cache to the distributed token cache. That's it. Now the very last thing is we got to instruct Dubaiev that don't use SAML tokens or don't exchange SAML tokens. Instead of that, just exchange the SAML token ID. And the way you can wire that up is by uh, adding this uh, small uh, event handler, right? So this is the handler. As you can see in this uh, handler, the security token validated handler, what I'm setting over here is I'm setting the is session mode as true. This would instruct Dubaiev that don't exchange SAML tokens, instead exchange the SAML token ID. And if you are programming with uh, Dubaiev 4.5 or VS.NET uh, 2012, uh, this property uh, is renamed to is reference mode, right? I think which is a more appropriate name. So we are all set now. And what we got to do is we just got to deploy our application onto the cloud. And this deployment would also deploy our distributed cache role. So let me just publish this, publish, and I would catch you at the end of a successful cloud deployment. So we are back again with a successful uh, Windows Azure deployment. And let me just hit the URL. And it uh, would take us back to the sign-in page. And again, I would select Google. And I'm already signed in, so I would just say allow the access. And you see that the page would get uh, redirected and I'm at the instance zero. And if I refresh it, uh, I'm again at instance one. So things are just working fine. So let me just start Fiddler now. So I would start Fiddler capturing the traffic and uh, just go back to the URL here, right? And hit refresh. And uh, let's see the cookie size now. So I'm back at uh, the cloudapp.net and you see that the size of cookie has drastically reduced. So earlier it was close to 2,800 bytes and now it is just uh, 600 bytes, roughly 400% uh, savings in terms of the cookie size. And the best part is that even though you add more claims and uh, if you, even if your SAML tokens actually balloons up, your uh, FedOt cookie size would just remain close to 672 bytes. Perfect.